I'm Sean Good. I'm a fisheries biologist with the Vermont Fish and Wildlife Department. It's the springtime, so ice is just melting on a lot of lakes and ponds, which means it's our busy season as fish biologists. It's time for us to get out after a long winter and start doing some of the surveys that we do across the state to collect data and information on fish populations that help us manage these fish populations. Um, some of the different surveys that we're uh, doing right now involve uh, spawning concentrations of fish. Sometimes we uh, need to get out there and collect large numbers of fish in specific situations or locations um, that allow us to catch large numbers of, of fish of the target species that we're after. There's also types of surveys that we do that are, are less specific and more general where we might go out and, and try to look at a fish population within a lake um, and look at the diversity of species that are there and what the quality of those species are that might be there in terms of overall size that would then in turn lead to um, providing a good quality recreational fishing opportunity for Vermont anglers. The, the techniques that are used for different types of surveys can vary widely. Um, when we're doing very specific uh, focused uh, survey efforts on a, a specific fish population of a specific species, uh, we might select one different type of um, survey technique over another because it's better at catching those fish. Whereas if we want to get a better, just a general understanding of fish populations within a lake, look at the fish community as a whole and understand the various dynamics of the species that live within that lake, we might select a different technique. When we do fish surveys, uh, what we do is we go out onto the various water bodies and we collect fish. That's the really the fun part of our job. We get to get outside and get on the water and we use different uh, pieces of equipment or techniques, um, types of nets, and we set those nets and those nets um, collect the fish. So one of the techniques that we uh, can use at this time of year to understand <clears throat> more about fish populations and fish communities is um, called trap netting. It's basically a, an oversized lobster trap, more or less, that's set. Um, it's attached to shore, it's got a big panel of mesh that leads out to the, the trap itself that intercepts fish as they move along the shoreline. When they hit that panel of mesh, it's like a curtain in the water. It's suspended with floats and it's uh, tight to the bottom with lead weights and they can't get through it. So fish behavior is just such that they'll turn and they'll follow that curtain of mesh and it directs them through a small uh, funnel and into the box, into the trap itself. When we're collecting those fish, that's just the beginning part of it. After we've collected those fish, we have to take them one at a time and um, take information from those fish. So we want to identify what species they are. We want to take um, different measurements on those fish. So we, we measure how big they are, how long they are. We often will take weights from those fish so we know how, how heavy they are. By taking those measurements and then putting them into the computer, we can then um, make a graphic representation of what the size range of those fish are from that particular lake at that particular time. And by looking at that size distribution of those fish, we can determine whether they're growing well, they're healthy, they're as big as they should be for their given um, weight or their given age, and we can see how that then um, translates back to uh, quality fishing opportunities. Sometimes we'll collect a structure from those fish that helps us understand how old they are as well. So we may remove, say, a scale, which can uh, then show us how old the fish is by looking at the rings on that scale. Other uh, structures off of fish uh, that we can age in include spines. So like the, the fin ray of a fish on the back of the dorsal um, can be collected and we can look at them under the microscope and that actually uh, we're able to count rings and, and understand their age. It's, it's important for us to understand things like uh, fish biology and fish behavior, fish habitat preferences, um, where they're going to occur at certain times of, of, the, of the year, so that we can set, uh, first of all, so that we can select the technique um, that we would use to, to capture those fish, the various survey or, or capture techniques. We select the appropriate one 
and we set them in the appropriate places so that when we're out there spending our time in the field um, we're efficient and effective and the data that we collect is good and it's valuable data. Um, we could uh, without having that understanding waste a lot of time and collect the data that is really not representative of, of something that's out there if we were to use the wrong technique or set it at the wrong place or at the wrong time. There's a lot more to it than just um, the biology. There's also the social component of setting fish management regulations. We have to understand what anglers want and what their desires are. But we take that and we mesh it with the data and the information that we know from doing biological surveys on fish populations to see what uh, their health and, and quality is. And we come up with the regulations that you see in the books. And those are monitored um, annually uh, across the state in various water bodies by all of us fish biologists. And we, um, you know, make an effort to make sure that the regulations that we have are um, as good as they can be to provide a wide range of opportunities um, for anglers in Vermont. Whether you're um, an angler that likes to harvest and eat fish or you're an angler that just wants to go out and catch um, you know, fish for recreation.